Okay, so there was stunning testimony today from Cassidy Hutchinson, who was an aide to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. But is there evidence? Is there evidence of criminal liability? That's the question. Let's talk about it. Ellie Honig is here, Alice Stewart, and David Axelrod, all back with me. Ellie, so we talked about um, White House uh, Counsel Pat Cipollone telling Cassidy Hutchinson that if anyone helped Trump get to the Capitol, they would be charged with every crime imaginable. Trump did not go to the Capitol and, you know, what happened in the car or what have you, that they wouldn't get him there, well, that's to be determined. She's saying, you know, lunged, all that stuff. Yeah. Lunch for the guy, take me, I'm the effing president or whatever. But based on today's testimony, do you think that the Trump White House has any criminal liability over what happened on January 6th? Well, I agree with Pat Cipollone. I mean, he basically said we're in the midst of a crime spree here. And I think we crossed two important thresholds today. One is the violence threshold. Right. It's a direct link, Donald Trump, knowing that that crowd was armed. And the other is intent. Remember early on, when the big question, the big point of dispute was, Jay, did Donald Trump know what that crowd was going to do? Did he want them to remain peaceful or did he want, to, want them to go into that Capitol angry? I mean, is there really any question about that anymore? And so Pat Cipollone actually nailed the crimes that I'm looking at. Conspiracy to defraud the United States, attempt to obstruct the proceedings in Congress. And I would argue even now that you have the force element, that's what makes seditious conspiracy. So I think this is a game-changing day. The question is, uh, what, would, what is the DOJ or if they're yeah. going to do anything? Well, and a big question I have is, has DOJ interviewed Cassidy Hutchinson? We don't know the answer to that. Jamie Raskin was asked that earlier on our air, and he said he doesn't know. But if DOJ has not interviewed her yet, shame on them. They ought to do it as soon as possible. Well, of course, you're the legal expert here, but the, the, the final cliffhanger of, of the testimony today, uh, Liz Cheney putting out there the potential for witness tampering, yeah. uh, reading... Um, texts yeah. and messages from people that say, hey, we know you're a team player. We, we know that the, you know that the former president reads all the testimony. So there potentially could be claims for witness tampering if that proves to be true. Do you guys want to hear it? Let's hear it. This is a call received by one of our witnesses. Quote, a person let me know you have your deposition tomorrow. He wants me to let you know he's thinking about you. He knows you're loyal, and you're going to do the right thing when you go in for your deposition. Tampering, or and, uh, to me, that's definitely influencing. Yeah, all I could think of when I heard that was that scene in The Godfather where the guy was the government witness, yeah. and they got to him, and he shows up at the, I guess it was a Senate <laughs> hearing. It's a Senate hearing, and, you know, completely denies everything that he had said uh, uh Previously, See, that's it, it was it was it was it 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 was it, it was really really gangsterish. <laughs> what I mean, that's the only way you can refer to it. I want to make a point about the uh, the whole the, the flap about what whether he lunged at the the uh, Secret Service guy in the limo. No one disputed. It's really interesting. Nobody disputes that he angrily wanted to be taken to the Capitol. The real issue is, I mean, that was a dramatic flourish. And it will know. We'll find out what the, the the facts were as best we can. But no one is disputing the fact that he wanted to go down there with the mob to the Capitol and uh, be a part of what was going on down there. But just what, but what is so? But then, what is the takeaway here for um, the supporters and allies of the president? But even conservative media today, they were like. <gasps> uh, Wow, that, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, that's the shocking part is that he actually acknowledged that for the first time. Look, I've spoken with several members, uh, Republican members of the House and Senate today. They still look at this as uh, a witch hunt from the Democrats. <laughs> they look at this, they call this, several of them have called this a kangaroo court. They call it a, a political um, um, prosecution. They say that Liz Cheney should be the last person asking questions, and they uh, wish that there was a Trump ally on this committee to, what they say, put a lot of this evidence into context. But at the end of the day, when you hear this evidence and hear this testimony, it's pretty damning. And but there's no amount of, of lipstick you can put on this to make this not look like it. But could thing. they have had a Trump ally on them? They could have. Yes, they chose not to. That was Kevin McCarthy's decision. He wanted to put Jim Jordan and others on there, who we now know were part of the deal. <laughs> Can I get a pardon, please? It was part of the deal. So uh, the, the speaker said no uh, and said you can put other people on the committee. And he, and I think Donald Trump at that point, 
said, no, we don't want to legitimate it. We want to call it a kangaroo court. They are executing a political strategy. But I will say this. Tonight in Illinois, for example, there was a race between two uh, Republican Congress, members of Congress. One was a, F a Freedom Caucus member named Mary Miller. Trump went down and endorsed her uh, over the weekend. It was a very close race at that time. It looks like she's going to win by more than a few points tonight. Uh, he endorsed the candidate for governor. He jumped on a moving train there, but the guy is a 100% Trumper, Darren Bailey, who got nominated there. So we shouldn't underestimate the loyalty that people feel to Trump among his base. And, it, you know, I don't know that it has been, uh, it may have been shaken among, uh, among some. I don't know uh, uh, among most. The real question is, um, does that trans, two things, does it translate into, yes, we'd like him to run for president again. And I think this may have some impact on how people view him uh, moving forward. And I think people are tired of the 2020 stuff and they may want to move uh, and they may want to move forward. Uh, the second thing is on this issue, this is not just a legal issue, what the Justice Department does. There is no parallel here. If the Justice Department indicts a president of the United States uh, who uh, uh, you know, was the, the preceding president, uh, there are consequences to that that have to be considered, including how all those people who are out there with guns and knives and all of that uh, how how do they uh, process this? So, I mean, th this is a really, really complex situation. I think what Donald Trump did was despicable, and, I, and, and boy, I'm not a lawyer, much to my mother's chagrin, but I think that it, uh, it sure feels like he bears legal responsibility for it, and in Georgia as well. But um, you have to weigh a lot of factors before you bring that case. You do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Today's hearing was...